we need to go over our quizzes and go over this practice quiz I just gave you. And actually, we have one more thing we need to learn, too. Tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll review, and our test is Friday. Anybody have a question about the quiz, the actual quiz that I graded and gave back to you? Ashley. How do you remember, the, like, how do you remember to not get confused the vertical acid filter or Well, I remember, Ashley, so let's say I got a problem like 8x minus 3 over 5x plus 10, okay? When I look at my equation, I know this is one of the asymptotes, right? So I look at it in this context, y equals 8x over 5x, those cancel, so y equals 8 fifths. y equals 8 fifths is a horizontal line. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals y equals that fraction. The vertical asymptote comes from the denominator. There's only one letter in the denominator, and it is x. So my vertical asymptote is going to be x equals negative 2. Lindsay? Can we do 4c? 4c. Now, the, the, shape, the shape that we're using is this one, because that's the square root shape, right? What does this do? Two units to the left. What does that do? Two units down. So I'm going to take the point that was here. I'm going to move it two left and two down. Now I'm going to have that exact same shape, Lindsay, but it's going to be starting down left two, down two. The exact same square root shape. Yep. No, if it's in there with the X, it's the opposite. If it's on the end, it's exactly what it says it is. So a plus one here would move you up one. A plus one here. Anybody else on the quiz? What about the practice work I gave you? The BFF quiz, were you able to notice, notice, all 12 are on this quiz. You need to know all 12 now. So y equal e to the x, what does it look like? An exponential. That's y equals e to the x. y equals the absolute value of x. That's your b y equals the square root of x. We just graphed that one. That's this, right? So there are the graphs. A, B, C. Any issue with that? Now I do the graphs, and you had to write the name of the function. So what's the first one? Logistic. Do not put log. We have a logarithmic function. Don't write log. You have to write the word logistic. What's the next one? Greatest, greatest, greatest integer. And what's the last one? Squaring. I will also accept quadratic if you want to write quadratic. Any question about those three? A, B, C. Now I do the picture, but you're going to give me the equation. What's A? Y equals X. That's your identity or your linear. <coughs> What's the next one? It's your logarithmic. So you can either write ln X or you can write log X. That's your logarithmic function. And what about C? That's your cosine. That's your cosine. 
Now notice the last one says draw a name or write equations of the three terms not mentioned. Cubic. So one of them is cubic. So you're either going to write the name or the equation or the picture. So y equals x cubed, and it looks like this. Perfect. That's one of them. Reciprocal function. Y equals 1 over x. And the picture looks like this. And the sine function. Y equals sine x. It looks like this. Very good. So on Wednesday, you will have a quiz similar to that. Where I will draw some, you will draw some, you will write some equations, you will write some names. All 12. Got it? Got it. Okay. Now let's turn that page over. This is some review from the last time we had class. <coughs> let's get through this as quickly as we can because like I said, we do have some stuff to learn to wrap up today. Our test is over the first four sections of the chapter. We have a little bit in chapter section four to go yet. Okay, here are our two functions. We're going to find f of g of 2. f of g of 2. Claire Mahoney, do you remember where we start if we're finding f of g of 2? That's exactly what you do, Claire. You plug 2 into g. So what does g of 2 equal? What does g of 2 equal? Five. Kids, take out the x, put in two. Three times two minus one is five. Now, g of two, this right here, is five. So what am I doing now? I'm finding f of five. <coughs> what is f of five? Fifty-three. Five squared is twenty-five times two is fifty plus three. Remember, you do exponents first. Do not multiply by 2 first. Now, the next one's the same kind of problem, but there's no number. Moses, are you being ornery today? What's f of x, Moses? Uh, f of x for number 2. Yeah. If you weren't being ornery, you would know. Uh, it's 2x squared plus 3. It is 2x squared plus 3. This f of x is 2x squared plus 3. So we're going to find g of 2x squared plus 3. Now kids, this is g of x. Whatever is here goes here. What's here? 2x squared plus 3. So we're going to have 2 times, or excuse me, 3 times 2x squared plus 3 minus 1. which is 6x squared plus 9 minus 1, or 6x squared plus 8. G of 7. Can you evaluate that? What's f of 4? 2 uh, times 4 squared plus 3. Yep, what would that be, Zach? Can you figure that out? 35. 
4 squared is 16 oh, times yeah. 2. No, you're right. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32, plus 3 is 35. You're exactly right. G of 7. <coughs> 20. So the answer to the problem is 55. How would you write that on the line? Just 55? Yep. Or? Just 55. <coughs> So this is going to be a foil. This is a foil situation. So 6x cubed, that's first times first, minus 2x squared, plus 9x minus 3. Yep, you're right. That's it. That's your answer. It's as simple as that. We're just multiplying. implicit functions, we mean get y by itself. Solve for y. So here we go. Maybe the first thing we do, Brittany, is subtract x squared. So we would have y squared equals 4 minus x squared. I'm trying to get y by itself. So I'll get rid of the x. Move it to the other side. Everybody okay with that? Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And as always, what do I have to remember when I take the square root? Plus or minus. So it's going to be plus or minus 4 minus x squared. That does not simplify. If you put 2 minus x, I don't know might get bodily harmed. I don't know. Don't 
simplify that. The answers are the square root of 4 minus x squared and negative the square root of 4 minus x squared. You can't, Moses. I'll hit you. <laughs> that doesn't simplify. Stop a minute and think, Moses. Would you agree 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5 squared? No. 9 plus 16 oh, yeah, yeah. is 25. That's a true statement, right? But if I do this, is 3 plus 4 equal to 5? No, it doesn't work. You cannot simplify when you have a plus sign or a minus sign. No, you can't. So these are the answers. You will always have two answers, kids. Okay? Always two answers. Now let's look at the next one. 2x plus y squared equals 8. Step one, Katie? Well, so what's step one to accomplish that? Yep, so y squared equals 8 minus 2x. Step two, Jordan Walker? Square root both sides. Plus or minus 8 minus 2x. So one of your equations is 8 minus 2x, the square root of that. And the other one is negative, the square root of that. You have to uh, write both those really down or just leave it plus or minus. You could put plus or minus. Here's the thing. I just got done finishing the academic tests, and I told them the same thing. Please write down two equations. And they said, oh, can we just do plus or minus? And I said, yes. And then about a fourth of them forgot the plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you if you can remember plus or minus, that's fine. But if you get in the habit of writing them separately, then you'll know, well, I'm supposed to have two answers, and you'll get them both down there. I just, because it's half credit. If you forget the plus or minus, you've only got one answer, tap off, which is dumb. I mean, come on, that's easy. You should get more. So as long as you put plus or minus, it's fine. Just don't forget to put plus or minus. I remember, I'm going to put two answer blanks. That will remind you to put two answers. Okay, here we go. Step one. Minus 3x squared from both sides. Step two. Square root both sides. So y equals the square root of 6 minus 3x squared or negative the square root of 6 minus 3x squared. Yes, Erica. Can you write it like the opposite way? So it's like negative 3x squared plus 6? Yes, as long as you have negative 3x squared plus 6, that would be absolutely fine. And would you do the last one on your own? Harder, isn't it, than the other ones? Not too bad. Did you move the x to the other side? Did you notice that that was negative? So you could have gone ahead and divided by negative 4. I did it in two steps. I divided by negative 1 first, and then I divided by 4, and then I took the square root. What happens when you take the square root of 4? You get 2. Now notice I did not take the square root of 16, right?
because I just got done telling Moses you can't do that when there's a plus or a minus. So it stays x minus 16. So when you divide by the 4 first, why didn't you divide by the 16 when you were following up by the 4 you square root of it? When I divided by 4? Yeah. Okay, I did it like this. I could have split that up and had x over 4 <coughs> minus 4, but I wanted to keep it as one radical. I wanted to keep it as one radical expression, but that would be okay. okay. You could do that. Lindsay? So it's just the top under the radical? Yes. The whole thing was under the radical originally, but I can take the square root of 4 and get 2, so that's why it's not under the radical anymore. Well, because you're going to be dividing by negative 4 then. Yeah. yeah. Yours might be turned around. I don't know. Yeah. Is that the same as 1 fourth x minus 4? Uh, yes, that would be the same thing. But then if you did that, if you wrote 1 fourth x minus 4 and you took the square root of that, Then you got this one. Yes? That's just how I read it. Yeah, it's a little bit, okay. Okay, so then you can't have a radical in the denominator, but you can't take the square root of just that one because you don't have one over here. So you really end up going back to uh, 1x minus 16 over 4 and taking the square root of that. So it's probably better just to get all together. Most things are the same yeah, thing. It is. Birthday is. Birthday is. That one's a little bit harder. Okay? Now, I want to go back. I want you to get your calculators out. I want to show you what you're doing here when you do this. So get your calculators out. And let's go back to the very first problem. I want you to get a more realistic view. Go to Zoom and click down to Zoom Square, which is 5, and then press Enter. Yeah. 